Buckley, is that? RDX Nitrogen, enough to level Parliament. Can you locate a detonator, Buckley? So, um, let's go back and let's talk about PlayStation. The unboxing of this, uh, let me see, go to my logos real quick. Mm -hmm. and, uh, take off the Xbox and the Steam. Because we're not talking about those two. All right, so PlayStation. Um, PlayStation HD camera. We're going to be doing an unboxing of it. And I'm not going to tell y'all where I got it from. But because I'm I'm real salty <laughs> because I got oh. the damn peripherals, but I don't have the damn uh, PlayStation secured. So y'all guess where I got it from, but I'm not telling. This is it right here, man. Now previously I had unboxed the uh, the controller, mm -hmm. and I, I'm telling y'all the controller I thought that was white is not white. It's, right. it's a lighter, lighter version of the original PlayStation, right? Okay. It's okay. real light. And I thought, I was like, um, because I seen people unbox it, you know what I'm saying? And they mm -hmm. was like, well, it was light gray. I mean, it, it wasn't white. I was like, it looked white. What were they talking about? They colorblind? So I just wanted to see for myself. But when I opened that thing up, man, it was, it was great. R really light, 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 light gray, and um, it does have like the PlayStation logo on the grips. It does have that, and um, they're real tiny. And uh, PlayStation, I um, I applaud them for doing that, um, because it's it's a detail that they didn't have to put in there that they mm -hmm. that they put in there. But PlayStation is cheap. They they real cheap. Because they didn't even put a charging cable in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you charge me almost 70 bucks for a controller and you can't even spend for like a $10 charging uh, USB-C type cable? Mm -hmm. So let's do the unboxing. Yeah, that, yeah, that is kind of crazy. Yeah, come on now. Yeah. Now, hopefully they, you know, they didn't just put the camera in this one. May, hopefully they put a cord in here as well. No, it's for the like here's the camera. Now you gotta go out and find a find a cord for it to plug it up. Like you cheap, you cheap, cheap, cheap. Sony cheap. They ain't never gonna give us nothing anyway. So Sony, you cheap, 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 cheap. I'll take it back if you send us a PlayStation. Other than that, y'all cheap. Oh boy. Oh, look at here. Oh, okay. So this is the PlayStation camera. So you get you get a nice little box and the instructions that nobody ever reads at all. And that's it. Now let's look at the camera, man. And so somebody, my man Anthony, he said, How you gonna get the accessories with no camera? I'm like, oh well, I mean without the system. Say, oh well. And this is not white either, man. This is that's not white. Too. This mm. is this is light gray. You see, me, me and Mike haven't haven't uh, did a show in person in so long. I'm telling you, Mike, when you see this thing, you'd be like, mm. man, it's it's not white. It's it is so light, 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 light gray. Um, Whoa. the good thing is not was it proprietary. It's not proprietary. It is. Um, USB 3.0 because I'm looking okay. at the color uh, of it right now. So mm -hmm. it is USB 3.0. Um, now people are saying that this is not for um, the VR, and I hope that's not true because you can play um, VR games supposedly. On the PlayStation Five, you can use your play your PlayStation VR on the PlayStation Five. The only That's cool. ca the only caveat to that is you have to have the version two of the PlayStation VR because it has to pass through um, 4K 
the the original one, the first one doesn't yeah. have a a, a 4K, 4K pass. Yeah, the nope. second one does. The um the first one doesn't. Um, yeah, I need the second one. Yeah, for a pass through, or well, you're gonna have to keep unhooking. Um, you're gonna have to keep unhooking your box. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you if you got your if you got your thing hooked up now and you wondering why you can't see 4K, that's the reason why. That is the reason why. So let me um I'm gonna do this live on air. Let let me uh I'm gonna hook it up to the PC, right? Okay. And I'm gonna see if it recognizes it. I didn't hear anything. Oh, there it go. <laughs> That's the sound it makes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do this live, and I'm going to see if um you can use this on the PC because I did try to test out the uh the PlayStation Five controller on my PlayStation Four Pro to see if it could be used. It does see the controller. It does see the mm-hmm. controller, but as far as using it, um, it won't let me use it at all. But there's this girl named Trippy, uh, Trippy Red or whatever her name is. She says that she got it to work. Okay. So I, I don't know how true that is, but um, I'm using OBS right now. I'm gonna try to do a video capturing device. Um, uh, my name is PS Five Cam, and let's see if this works. PS Five Cam, and let's. I don't see it. D-Link OBS Virtual Cam Elgato HD. I don't see it. Logitech Game Capture HD Cam Link D-Link Video Capture OBS Camera X Split. Nope. I don't see it. Maybe it has to restart. In order for you to use it, but I don't, I don't see it. <laughs> Let me try it again. All right. Oop, oop, so that's the sound that it made. So you know what I'm saying? It's saying that um, Windows by making that sound is saying that it can be used, um, but it's not seeing it. Cause I don't see any new camera source in here. Cam link, D link. Nope. All right. Well, uh, you gotta wait till PlayStation Five come out to see if it works. So, um, as of right now, y'all, yo, you can't use it. You cannot use it on your PC, but. Y'all know that sound when you hook the stuff up into your PC and it makes that boop, 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 boop. You know what I'm saying? You're able to use it, but you're, you're not. So, um, now, let's take these logos off. All right, now that we got that out the way, let's talk about this. Hold up, let me put the advisory warning on. Because it's going it's to get a little hairy in here. Mm-hmm. All right. So y'all have been warned. This is the cursing part of the show. All right. So as I'm traveling down the road to pick up my PlayStation HD camera, mm-hmm. what do I see on 95? And I should have took some pictures of it, but I didn't. Trucks and cars with flags waving and Trump signs. 
Most of them tags were from Virginia. The yellow tags. Most most of those tags was from Virginia. Some of the tags had the. Uh, I mean, some of some of the trucks had the flags with a white guy holding a rifle. So I don't know what that's all about. What they're trying to do is intimidate these voters, and they're trying to intimidate people in general. Mm -hmm. Just because you got a truck and you got some big ass wheels and a flag, that's no intimidation. Mm -hmm. That's that's not intimidating me. How about you? How about you do this? All these Trump supporters that was raising that flag. How about you go down to? I say what Southwest. Mm -hmm. How about you go down there and wave them damn flags? How about that? How about you? Is Berry Farm still up? I think they closed all the berry farms. Mm -hmm. But like Lincoln Heights, Butternut, uh, 14th and Clifton. How about you go down Georgia Avenue? How about you go down to those blocks and you try that Trump shit? See, they want to be so racist right now they want the country to go back to the way that it is and a lot of we're not gonna let that happen man that's right people are getting tired black america is getting tired of getting slaughtered black america is getting tired of being disrespected black america is getting tired of not having your voice being heard mm -hmm. and these Clowns. Now I used to be an Ice Cube, and, and remember what I said. I said I used to be an Ice Cube fan. Mm. I, you know, what I'm saying even in my rapping career, you know, I tried to model myself after Ice Cube because he, I mean, he is a dope lyricist. He's a dope writer. He's a dope producer. Mm. But when you get that high off the hog, and you switch coats, I don't have no words for him, man. Mm. So. You know, boys in the hood is not allowed in my home. If if I come in my house and I see boys in the hood on TV, a chair is going through it. You understand me? Boys in the hood is not allowed in my house no more. Matter of fact, I'm giving who if somebody wants my boys in the hood uh Blu-ray, you can have it. Because I'm getting rid of all that shit. Any movie that Ice Cube is in is getting canceled out of my house. Because he does not represent uh, that one page plan that he's trying to give to Trump. Trump don't give a shit about no black people. He Just really like doesn't. Steve Harvey ain't allowed in my house no more. Uh -huh. Steve Harvey want to back backpedal and say, oh, well, I didn't, man, you knew what the fuck you was doing when you went up there to go talk to this clown. So all these rich, all these rich black people don't speak for black America because they don't have to go through the same shit that we have to do. Uh -huh. Mike, what happened when you don't if, if you if you can't pay your mortgage on time? Oh shoot, you get kicked out, bro. Okay. That's right, on the streets. Right. Ain't no ain't no saving or anything like that. They're not oh please, please, please. No, ain't no please. See you later. Pack your bags. So so Mike, do you have enough in your bank account to pay your mortgage off for at least like five years? You can just say, bang, here no. you go. Oh he oh hell no. I don't need it. Hell no. I don't need We're doing the paycheck to paycheck thing, man. Just trying to survive. You understand? Yeah. So your your son, he don't go to private school, do he? No, he doesn't. We go to public school, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mine had to go too. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Um the cost of living. It's going up. It's not going down. This little bit of chump change that they give us for supposedly this pandemic and Stuff like that, it's, it still ain't enough to survive. It ain't. It's still a struggle. It's still a struggle every day, every night. So rich black people don't speak for us. I understand that, you know, people like Tyler Perry, shit like mm -hmm. that, they've been through the struggle, so they know what the struggle is. Yep. You understand? Yep. Tyler Perry, he was homeless. You yes, he definitely was. Sleeping in his car and shit like that. Mm -hmm. But... As much as I appreciate, I mean, 
Tyler Perry, he a snitch. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of his plays and shit, like you go see a Tyler Perry play and you have a good standing relationship with your, your lady or your significant <laughs> other, y'all going to be arguing by the time that the shit is over. You know what I'm saying? Because he be snitching like a motherfucker, man. That, he, be, he be dry snitching and shit, man. But, he found a way to get money on that. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. I can get some money. <laughs> and I I ain't mad at him. I I just like no, I if 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 the Tyler Perry is on downstairs, I just go the fuck up. I don't even want to hear oh. shit. You know what I'm saying? But no, I lost money up for a second. <laughs> <laughs> but which rich black America does not speak for black America? That's they you don't. Because right. you can see Lil Wayne. Come on, man. Oh. Lil Wayne is a fucking fool. And I don't care if you like Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne is canceled in my on my fucking iPod as we speak right now. That shit is canceled. Nothing that Lil Wayne does or is, is, is attached to is no longer in my playlist. Because he, he's a fucking sellout. He's a fucking sellout. <laughs> How the fuck can you come from New Orleans, one of the most racist fucking cities in the fucking USA, and you can you can say, well, I don't I had never seen police brutality just because a white officer saved you from a gun sh- from a gunfight or whatever the fuck it was, and then you rap about fucking cop the cops are hot and all this other shit in your raps. Yeah. The block is hot for what? How the block? The block ain't hot in the suburbs. <laughs> so what the fuck are you talking about? The block is hot in the suburbs. The block is hot in the suburbs. But somebody stole your rake or something. That's how I come. The block is hot. The HOA came to you and finds you for your uh, for your grass not getting cut. Yeah, that r- remind me. I gotta cut my grass before I leave. <laughs> Um, so that's why the block is hot. I I ain't never been to the suburbs and seen motherfuckers selling rocks or weed and shit. You know what I'm saying? They sell weed, but you gotta go to you know what I'm saying the the dude house is selling and call them like, hey dude, I'm gonna come over there, I'll bring you some, and you ain't gotta worry about you know what I'm saying none none of the bullshit. But the that's that's where the block is hot. Come on, man. Lil Wayne, you canceled, bro. You are so canceled, man. You do not... You you don't speak for me. Mm-hmm. Correct. That shit is... That, he's, he's a fucking moron. He's he's so ridiculous, man. But with this shit where uh, Trump people on, on 495 South. So as I'm, as I'm riding up the road, you know what I'm saying... It's a big ass traffic jam, and I'm thinking, oh damn, these the, the Washington Football League team, whatever the fuck they call, because mm-hmm. I'm not a sports fan, so that's why I don't like going out on Sundays because, you know, you you gotta drive past FedEx Field, and you're gonna be fucked up in traffic. So that's why that's one of the reasons why I don't like the Washington Football Team because they fuck my traffic up on Sundays or whenever they play, and I gotta go out somewhere. I'm thinking that it's a game today. I said, shit, man. I'm being trafficked for a while. And it's all the way backed up to off Indian Head. You understand? I'm like, damn. Then I get on the road. I'm seeing all these damn flags and all this other shit. And I'm like, okay. I see one, two, three. So by the time I got from, what was that? Forest Heights. All the way to almost uh, uh, past the FedEx, uh, the FedEx turn off. Mm. The motherfuckers was just lined up, man. Just lined up, and you had were they on both sides too? Nah, they was just going. They was going north. Nah, they was going north. Okay. And they just had the flags waving. And all this shit, man, and Trump and all this other shit, you know what I'm saying? Just driving through on on 495, man. I'm like, God damn. You trying to intimidate people 
by by doing that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it was. They want this. They want this jackass back in the house so bad that they are willing to do any and everything, destroying mm-hmm. um, ballot boxes and stuff like that. Yep. You know, setting stuff on fire, and then um, you know what I'm saying the Grand Wizard talking about if he lose, he gonna leave the country. You gonna leave the country because you know them lawsuits are coming um, for you. That's right. I mean, it's just if you're a Trump supporter, now. It's kind of hard for me to say this because when I was working for this one company and I had to go out for school, there was this Trump supporter and I still stay in contact with him. Right. But mm-hmm. when it, it was, it was three of us, you know what I'm saying? Well, the other guy wasn't the Trump supporter. It was me, one white guy and another white guy, but he was a Trump supporter, but he knew that I wasn't a Trump supporter. And the other white guy, he wasn't a Trump supporter. So both of us was like, like you know what I'm saying, Barack Obama. And we would sit there, there and, and I told the story before. We sat down there and ate lunch and all that other stuff, and we had no confusion. And we went out to eat um, sometimes because the food at the Peachtree Hotel was horrible. So we went out to eat a couple of times, and we, we were just cool. We were sitting in class together. We always ate together. And they knew that he knew that me and the other guy wasn't a, a Trump supporter. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And he didn't say anything out the way. You know what I'm saying? So I can say some Trump supporters are not all racist. They just believe some of the stuff that he was uh, putting out there. And I don't know if they're going to believe it now. But if you right now, if you are a Trump supporter, you gotta you gotta be either stupid, dumb, or racist. And if the the guy that I'm talking about, if he watched this, I'm not talking about you, dog, because you and me are cool. You know what I'm saying? We we had no no squabbles. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't talking about the other dude. That you, um, let me say, in, when I was working for NCR, because there's another cat that I was working with that was a Trump supporter. You might be like, oh, we were cool? Nah, nigga, fuck you. But me and him was cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> me and the dude from NCR, that other motherfucker, man, fuck him up on site. That's how I feel about that dude. But uh, uh, if if you are a Trump supporter right now, you got to know that this guy is racist, man. Yeah. I mean, t- just going on with this pandemic shit and the Sleepy Joe and um that that doctored video about him sleeping. I mean, they put that out there. That shit was what didn't really happen. You know what I'm saying? They took footage from something else. And did that that they dumb shit. So that they, yeah, I know about that. They be photoshopping the hell out of these videos, you so, know, to make one part look bad. So, yeah. I, I mean, come on, man. Mm-hmm. You got you you got to realize that in a couple of more by Tuesday, shit is going to get real because if this if this clown wins the election, these Trump supporters are going to be off the fucking hinges. If he does not win there are going to be a lot of stuff going on and i don't advocate violence i advocate defense and let me tell you this all you and this this message is going out to and i'm being real serious about this this message is going out to all the people that you call yourself so self in a gang and all this other stuff it's time for y'all to stop fighting over blocks. It's time for y'all to stop fighting over streets because that is not, that, that is not the goal here. Mm. It, I don't care if you don't live in surgeon quarters or if a nigga come to surgeon quarters, you want beef with him because he live on a uh, uh, butternut. It's not time for that, man. Y'all dudes need to come together. And I'm talking about all these people in these so-called gangs. Y'all need to come together because if this jackass goes back in the White House, whether he wins or lose, if he wins, they are going to be crazy. If he loses, they're going to be crazier. You, y'all need to get together. I'm telling you, you need to put the beef aside. You need to put the rags aside. You need to put the colors aside 
And you need to get together because we're going to need y'all to defend the people that can't defend themselves. Because you got these Trump supporters, these Klansmen going around lynching motherfuckers, going around intimidating. Uh, they're intimidating. They're not intimidating white people. They're intimidating black people. So if you find yourself with the color skin that I got and you call so call yourself a gangster, a thug, and you do all this other shit, fuck claiming your block. Help the motherfuckers out that can't help themselves, man. You got to. Because he's starting a race war. And the race war has already begun, man. These Karens and these Klansmen and these white racist people, they feel so comfortable to subject black people to question us, like, where's your papers at? And I'll talk... I, I know I'm getting off such subject but i'm gonna talk about this one instance and i'm gonna bring it up again that because the last job that i was with when i was telling you about the dude we was he was training me but he snatched some shit from me when we was when we was inside the i was like fuck it when i was doing the royal farms it shit and i was getting trained by the dude and i was like okay we had two different techs you do your shit your way, I do my shit my way. And I'm about to test the product that was defaulted and trying to fix it. He snatches some shit from me. Like I'm his fucking kid. You don't snatch no motherfucking thing from me. I'm a grown-ass fucking man. Just like him, he's a parent and he's a grown-ass man just like me. You don't snatch shit from me, dog. And then, like, I tried to let that shit go. But then he, uh, uh, we got into it once more and then he had brought it back up. He was like, yeah, I seen you on Facebook and you tried to throw me under the bus. I'm like, you shouldn't have never snatched nothing from me because if we were if I wasn't in a corporate setting and you snatched some shit from me, I would have cursed you the fuck out because I'm not your child. I'm not a child. I'm a grown ass man. And if I, if you telling me I'm taking lead on a project and you snatching some, Ain't no fucking way. Because if we was on the street, I would have had your fucking jaw, man. And that's on some real shit. I'm not your, I'm not your average fucking geek squad tech. I mean, I build computers and I know all this tech shit. But I'm not your average tech. I'm not no bitch. My mama ain't raised no bitch and I'll never be one. So when you disrespect... I don't disrespect people. When you disrespect me and I give you the utmost respect... It's time for you to get slapped in the motherfucking mouth because I don't I don't disrespect nobody intentionally. I'll be I I tell you the truth. I'll be the bitch. I'll be the bitch. Go ahead. Nah, go ahead. Go ahead, cuz. Go ahead. Nah, nah. You got it. You got it. But if you back me into a corner, I gotta fight my way out. I'm not gonna let you just motherfucking run over me. Nah, Slim. I'm and and a lot of people take my kindness for weakness. And that's why some people talk to me the way that they do because I'm a real quiet person. I'm a real quiet and and to you know me I'm a quiet person. You know what I'm saying? Like you may meet a motherfucker, right? And like okay, say Mike walking down walking in the mall, right? And he run into a motherfucker that know me. He was like, "Well, Fred quiet as shit. He don't really say shit." Mike say, "What the fuck? Are you talking about Fred why?" That friend? <laughs> no, friend? No, friend ain't quiet. You can ask him. No, friend. No, friend quiet. He don't really say shit. No, because I don't say shit. I don't say shit because I don't, I don't have to say shit. I don't walk fast because I don't fucking need to. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's how I am. And I'm, I'm a patient person. Until you back me into a corner, that's when that shit come out. That's when that, that's when that, uh, uh, Gainesville Street shit come out. You understand? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was like, come on, man. Don't snatch shit from me. And then the first day that I worked, we was talking about masks and shit. Like, well, uh, I had on my mask and shit, and he wants me to, like, you know you don't have to wear your mask in here. Like, the fuck, you Dr. Fauci and shit? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, a you a doctor? 
You got your doctorate. You know what I'm saying? I know you were tech and shit, but th- did you go to school for for computers and mm-hmm. to get your PhD or your doctorate and shit? Nah, you don't got to wear your mask and like nah, dog. You know what I'm saying? I gotta go home and shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then all these motherfuckers r- walking around in the facility, no no mask on and shit like that. I'm like nah, they, nah. You got I nah. I'm putting my mask on. Well, do do you want me to wear? A ma- yeah, man. Can you wear a mask while you? Why you're why you're around me and why I'm riding in the car? Can you just wear a mask? That's all I'm asking you to do. You don't want to wear a mask, I'll put mine on. But don't tell me that you don't have to do this. You don't have to. Well, you know, mask is. Don't tell me no shit like that. And that's the first day. That's when we started beefing. Beefing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Off off the mask shit. Don't tell me what the fuck to do with my mask, dog. <laughs> And then from there it just drickled and That's shit. Me, yeah. When that when he snatched that chick from me, oh coffee. man, I was higher than fish grease, man. I'm I trying to tell you. Mm. See the cat on the string shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's you know what I mean. But. Well, you know, and that's man, for, man. for everybody watching the game and show when you watching the rebroadcast mm. of this. This is the reason why we tell y'all that you know the the misconception of what a gamer is. Me and Mike are, are hardcore gamers. We love games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If if YouTube, if we can make a living off of YouTube doing unboxings and video game play, I would say fuck. Fuck you to a clock in, you know what I'm saying? To a time clock, to somebody's time clock. I love, I love video games, motorcycles, and chess. That's my, that's my. Oh, and Crown Royal, no, oh, <laughs> motorcycle, <laughs> motorcycle, video games, chess, and Crown Royal. That's my four pleasures. You understand? So, people that play video games aren't living in their mama basement. Not all of us. People that play video games ain't just fat and wh- eating Cheetos. Not all That's of right. us. I mean, I'm a big boy. I love eating Cheetos. Yeah, I like Cheetos too. Hey, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but don't don't misconstrue us. Put us in a box and say, "Oh, the game is nerds." No, nah. call me a motherfucking nerd to my face. <laughs> call me, and I'll say one more thing before I go. When I was working, and I told this story before. When I was working at Geek Squad. When I was a Geek Squad technician, and you had to tie the little pocket shit, because I had the pocket protector, because I had the pins in it, because I had to write up orders, and I wear glasses. I don't wear glasses for show. Motherfucker, I pay. I want you to know I paid for these. These gazelles. You know what I'm saying? So I had flashy glasses, but I wear glasses. So I had a motherfucker come up to me and say, are you the geek? I told this motherfucker, I said, hey, look, don't let the fucking glasses. Well, I didn't say fucking, but I said don't let the glasses and the tie fool you. I ain't no damn geek. Another story. <laughs> they treated they treated Best Buy employees, the tech employees, to go see Star Wars, and that's when I got into Star Wars. So, um, I was working at the I was working at the Best Buy in in uh, Wardorf, and. You know what I'm saying? They treated us to the movie. We we saw the late premiere, the 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 premiere, the the late night show, right? So we sitting down. They gave us free popcorn. They had um auctioned off a well, they had raffled off uh, a, a processor and the motherboard. And my man LT, uh, rest in peace, he had won both of those, right? So there was this clown ass white dude that came in. And there was a dude sitting in the, I, I guess it was the seat that he was sitting in. And he came in this motherfucker. He was like, dude, get up off out my seat, man. And all this. And talking to him real gangster and shit, right? So I'm looking at this motherfucker. I'm like, then I had to say something. I had to say something. I said, won't you go find another motherfucking seat? And I, I don't know if I, what I say. I'm not saying what I'm saying verbatim, but I'm just saying some of the shit that I said. I told the motherfucker, I was like, well, um, everybody in here for free, you going to get to see uh, a free movie. And I was like, you sitting up here trying to impress your girl and, um, to tell this dude to get up out the seat. I said, won't you come out over here and tell me to get up out my seat? And I was t- I told the dude 
that was sitting in the seat. I was like, don't get about the seat because if he make you get about the seat, I'm going to come in something to him and the other dude. So, and then, uh, it was the dude named Jeff, this guy named, uh, Anthony, both of and LT. So we was like, uh, uh, Jeff, it was like, yeah, go ahead, 446. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, they thought everybody in there was fucking nerds and, and, and geeks and shit because we going to see Star Wars. I mean, motherfuckers was dressed up like Doc Vader like, and all this yeah, other shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The motherfuckers was coming mm-hmm. like that. And I have never I never saw a Star Wars movie in my life until that day that Best Buy got treated. Well, Intel treated us to go see the movie. And then that, that's when I fell in love with the Star Wars series. I was like, well, let me watch all these uh, joints, man. I forget what Star Wars movie it was, but it was the, uh, I think it was the the one when uh, um, you saw how the dude became Doc Vader. I think it was that one. So, uh, yeah. Revenge of the Sith or something like that. Yeah, yeah. No, that, was it Revenge of the Sith? Is, yeah, something like that. I, I think I'm getting more confused too myself, brother. Yeah, oh, we got uh some comments down there. Marco. My he said Marco Marco said he gonna kiss my ass. Let me tell you something, Marco. I wish that <laughs> motherfucker would. You hear me? I wish I wish the fuck he would, man. I will beat the brakes off his ass, man. I will beat and let me tell you another fucking story. So I'm working at I'm working at Taco Bell. I'm working at the Taco Bell in Greenbelt, right? So at that time, it was like two Taco Bells in Greenbelt. And my cousin Cornelius, she was a manager at one of them. So she got me a job at the at the Taco Bell. Now, I haven't, I that's the third Taco Bell that I worked at, right? So, you know, I was kind of not knowing, I forgot a lot of the shit, you know what I'm saying? But the, the basic shit, like the taco, you put the fucking meat in there, you put the leathers you put the cheese. If they want the Supreme, you put the fucking sour cream on. Shit like that. But it was just like some of the, the burritos and shit that I was getting mixed up on. Because I, I didn't work at Taco Bell for so long. So it was this foreign guy. And he just kept... And some of the way that these foreign guys talk, like they talk real high and real angry and shit. Like... I'm not trying to stereotype nobody, but you know this like when Chinese people talk and shit like that, they be like, oh, this on. And you, you be thinking that the motherfucker be like, they arguing like shit. And the motherfucker's probably just saying, hey, dog, what time you get off? And that's probably about it. You know what I'm saying? And But the motherfucker, and the motherfuckers just, they just talking some calm shit. But, wow. But this this foreign guy, he uh, kept yelling at me. And you caught me on the wrong fucking day. I was dating this girl named Faith at that time. And she had dropped me off. I was still staying with my mother. She had I, I ain't had no driver's license, no nothing. She dropped me off at work and she was gonna pick me back up, right? So I mean she was cool with my mother, my mother let her get the car and shit like that. So this motherfucker, me and me and her was arguing or beefing about something before uh, I went to work. And that's a bad time to catch me. You know what I'm saying? Because if if my shit ain't whole, then I'm kind of like fucked up for the day, right? I, I go off, I work off emotions and shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm fixing a fucking burrito or something. And this motherfucker like... Hey, you supposed to be and man, that was it. It was like it was like a firecracker. Pop. Oh shit. Bam, 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 bam. Man, I three or four pieces, motherfucker, man. And he was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. it looked like a fucking like Mike Tyson punch out type shit. You know what I'm saying? So I hit the nigga and then I just stopped because he wasn't hitting me back. You know what I'm saying? So um I fucked him up uh, pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Or well, you can't sue me now because that shit happened o- over so many years ago and you deserve the shit if this motherfucker ever watched this video. But um, after after I fucked him up, like three-pieced him, four-pieced him, um, the manager calls us in the office and shit, right? And he was like, what's going on? Why you do that? I was like, man, because I'm tired of him 
keep talking to me like that. He keeps yelling at me. You know what I'm saying? You can talk to me calmly, but you don't have to keep yelling at me. Mind you, I was in my, I was a, a this was early in my 20s and shit. And this is when you could get a fucking job. You can be like, man, fuck you. And I go across the street and now, now I'm flipping burgers or doing something else. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I fucked this dude up. You know what I'm saying? And I was telling him, the way that this cat is talking to me, he's talking to me in a very disrespectful tone. He keep yelling at me. And that's the one thing that I can't, I can't do. I can't take nobody yelling at me and shit. Oh, I got another story for you. This turned into horror stories. Yeah, it did. <laughs> so, so, um, he had, I banged him up, so I got suspended. You know what I'm saying? Sent me home and shit. And then I never, I never came back to the Taco Bell. And I, I never did. But it was, I, I, I was pissed off. You know what I'm saying? Okay. The reason why I don't like yelling and shit. That's why I can't do the army or the any of the military forces and shit. Because, like, what's your name, Private? Who the fuck is you talking to, man? Stop screaming in my ear. That would be an attitude that I would do, right? So I can't do the military shit because I can't do the yelling shit. So, again, I'm dating this girl. I don't want to say her name, though. Because, I, well... We're arguing about something, and I'm in ROTC, and this is Largo High School in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, or Largo, Maryland, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. So we're outside doing these practice shit or whatever, and we standing at attention, and we all suited up. I got on the fucking the vest, the shirt, the tie, and all that. I mean, not the vest, the jacket, the tie, and I believe I was wearing long sleeves that day and shit. It was hot. And we out on the football field. So we stand at attention. And somebody throws a fucking shoe. They throw a fucking shoe. And the shoe kind of like passed me, but it dropped on my foot. I took that shoe and I threw that motherfucker and I hit uh, Sergeant Phillips. That was his name. I hit Sergeant Phillips on the side of the head. And he was like, who threw that shoe? I was like, yeah, who threw that motherfucking shoe? Man, I was, I was pissed off. I mean, I, I threw the shoe after the shit, but somebody almost hit me with that motherfucker. I was like, yeah, who threw the shoe? Because I threw that there. And then I got sent to the to the principal office and shit. Like, Fred. It was every time I went in there, Mrs. Kyle and Mr. Brooks, I forgot which one they were. Fred, why you in here again? Fred, why you in here again? Fred, why'd you hit that boy? Fred, why'd you do this? Look, it it wasn't me. So, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't my fault. So, another story. Lago, Lago oh, High School, man. we was at gym. <laughs> and I, we had carried over from Kettering, right? And I would always used to beef with the, the guys that was in a class because I, I i i really got picked on you know what i'm saying but i got picked on to the point where that shit stopped like in uh high school it stopped because i just got tired of the bullshit and then that's when i was throwing hands now i threw hands before i even came to high school because i fucked this dude named was andre younger or andre king when is either andre younger or andre king and he's a I think he's a Facebook friend of mine, but I fucked you up, Slim. We had to, what was we going to Greenbelt? Now I'm jumping through stories. The first story was of the dude at Lago, but the dude in Greenbelt, again, at the bus stop, he used to get picked on and all this other shit. But I think I had an argument with or with my sister or something leaving the high school. Leave, leaving, uh, um, that's when I was staying on uh, Allendale Place. So leaving Allendale, walk to the bus stop, getting picked on the shit. Andre King or Andre Younger, I, I forget which one it was, but slap, keep slapping me in the back of the head. And I'm like going through this all fucking school year. So one too many fucking slaps. Man, I beat the brakes off this motherfucker, man. I hit him one fucking time and then grabbed him and was just... Shake, shake, nah, I was hitting his head up against the fucking glass. I was like, bam, bam, bam. And 
see that that goes to you should never fuck with a quiet person because I'm, I'm I was quiet because I I wasn't in the girls, I was just into video games and transformers and shit. You know what I'm saying? They kind of grew up a little bit faster than than uh, I. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to go over uh, my man Mario house and. You know, we used to play Transformers and watch G.I. Joe and play G.I. Joe and play Commodore 64, Atari 2600. We used to do all that shit. The, the girls wasn't on my fucking mind. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about... I give a fuck about the joystick more than I give... Oh, oh that may sound come off real fucked up. But... <laughs> 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 but I wasn't in the girls and shit. I was just into that. You know what I'm saying? I was in the video games, riding bikes and shit like... So I had to fuck him up. And then from there, from the time that I fucked him up was nobody ever fucked with me no more because they saw me fuck this dude up so fucking bad, man. Nobody ever fucked with me no more. All right. So moot, we, we stayed in, uh, I think that which, which one I always get this confused Palmer park or seat pleasant, which one had, which has the Sugar Ray Leonard boxing center in it? That's Palmer Park. Yeah, you be messing me up with that too. I don't even know now. <laughs> Wherever that shit is, Palmer, where, mm. where the police station is, that's the neighborhood that I, I was living in, right? Mm. Then we moved to Forestville, Forest Park Estates. I go over there, right? And then I'm kind of in the in crowd. And then there was this, I, I, I had a good friend at the time, this guy named Robert. Then all of a sudden, Robert just stopped hanging with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, then I was the nigga in the neighborhood, the the animal dude, because I was always into catching turtles and tadpoles and had, like, baby foxes and baby raccoons as pets and shit like that. So I became the weirdo of the neighborhood. Then I started getting picked on again and shit, right? So I think one incident, and then, like, when I was going to middle school, I was getting picked on in class and shit, right? So I was getting picked on in class and I was getting picked on at home, right? So the way that when I was home, when I was at home and shit, I used to walk the long way to the bus stop and shit because I didn't want to get into no confrontation. This one day, two incidents, this dude named Sicardo and then this guy named Tyrone. We get off the bus. This is the first time Tyrone, me and Tyrone get off the bus, right? Because I was I was friends with somebody. And I was walking some girl home and shit. I forgot what her name was. But Tyrone had got off the bus and he wanted to impress these niggas that was that lived across the street, like Sharif um people. Uh, um they they lived on the other side of the Tulip Avenue. So he wanted to impress them and shit, right? He got off the bus, he smacked my books out my hand and shit. That was it. I fucked Tyrone up. You hear me? I beat the shit out of him. I beat the shit out of him so bad that the girl, the lady across the street, she had to come and pull me off of him because she was like the neighborhood watch or whatever. She had two small sons. Um, I forget what their names was, but I beat the shit out of Tyrone. I beat the enforced park and Tyrone, you a bitch. You a cold bitch. You know what I'm saying? Even now you a cold bitch, Slim. You know what I'm saying? I beat the shit out of Tyrone. Got off the bus. Wham, wham, wham. Got him down on the ground. I was holding him by one. I was holding him by one hand on his throat, and I was just punching the shit out of him because I was taking my rage out of all the shit I was going through in the neighborhood and all the shit that was going through in high school. That's cool. All right. right? So then the niggas in the neighborhood just stopped fucking with me and shit, right? Because even though that all them niggas in the neighborhood, sure, uh, uh, Wally and Dre and all these other dudes that was in the neighborhood, even though they thought that I was a bitch because I, they never saw me fight the motherfuckers. They never, never, never come up to me and started shit. You know what I'm saying? They never came up to me to try to do any shit. Right. Then fast forward a couple of months later, this, this dude named Sicardo and his little, I think his big brother, they moved into the neighborhood. And I guess the past initiation to say that you was tough and all this other shit is that you had to pick with Fred and shit, right? So, and all these stories are true. They can be verified. You understand? Sicardo came to my house with his brother and Wally 
and some other dudes, right? Came to my house, knocked on my door and shit, was like, can you come outside? I never hung with these dudes, right? Never hung with them. But why you want me to come outside? Oh, there is another incident. Why you want me to come outside? So I came outside and he was like, uh, um, he wanted to fight me and shit, right? So that day, unfortunately, my sister was in the house. My sister, Keisha Cook, she was in the house. Um, and then my man Delante or or Dante or something, he had called me. He was like, "Man, there's some niggas on the other side because it's I I was that was Tulip Avenue, right? And they were some connected townhouses. They said there was a nigga on the other side waiting for me to come out and shit. So I was about to get jumped. So my sister must have heard all the commotion and shit." And she came outside because she was doing her hair and she had a hair dryer in her hand. She unplugged the hair dryer for some reason and came out. She was like, y'all not going to jump my brother. Y'all going to fight him one-on-one. And I beat the brakes off of Cicado. Beat the brakes off of that motherfucker, man. So my mo- when my mother came home, my sister told my mother what happened. And these niggas lived behind me, right? So my mother walks over, takes me over to Cicado's house and tell them what happened. Like they was came, they came over here to try to jump me and all this other stuff. Then Sicado got his ass whipped by his mother right then and there. Sicado mother beat his ass with that fucking belt, and I was sat up there and laughed. And then from there on, Forest Park, I had no problems with them niggas because they saw me beat Tyrone, they saw me beat Sicado, and I fucked both of these cats up. But none of these niggas, Wally, Dre. And those other niggas that was in the neighborhood, they tried to test me. Ain't none of them motherfuckers try to try to come up to me and try to fight me and shit. It was always like the picking and saying shit. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, whatever. And that's the time when I was getting into girls and shit, right? But I had it, I, I had it over all these niggas because in high school, no middle school, I got my first job at the Chinese joint on Richie Road. So I was buying my own clothes. I had money. Then that's when I met my man Keith Curry. Met him. He let he taught me how to drive and shit. Let me drive his car. So we riding through the neighborhood. I'm hawking the horn. I'm like, yeah, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, Fred in the car and shit. You know what I'm saying? And this is ninth grade and shit. No, eighth grade. Eighth grade when he was letting me um drive a little bit through the neighborhood. And um, one more before I, before I forget. Um, you sure? Yeah. <laughs> one more. I was, I was I was bounty I was doing bounty hunting right I was working for this company called MIB right um, with this guy named Black? yeah Chief Blue I, if I can pull up that fucking picture I would but we would the, the company was called MIB right so we would do security for Go Go's right so we like the uh, um, we did we did uh, security for Go Go's and we did security for like some strip clubs like uh, the little tacky ass club that's on. The Macombo Lounge. Macombo Lounge was so fucking ghetto. They had bras in there stripping in fucking pajamas and shit. And 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 uh pants and uh bra and panty sets out of fucking uh Zares and shit, man. I mean they let anybody come in there and fucking strip. But we was doing Lapina, Icebox, um uh, uh what was that? Mexican Lindo. Uh then I started working at the Ibex for Chuck. Big Chuck before he died, before Buggy Joe died. Buggy Joe died first, and then Big Chuck died. So I was doing security, and then like MIB, he had a contract where he was doing like a bounty hunting work too and shit, right? So, um, at that time you could not carry a pistol, right? You could buy you could buy a shotgun. You got a legal a legal shotgun, um. So I'm about to go out on a bounty and shit. These niggas come to my house. Wally and, and Dre and all these other niggas, they come to my house. I guess to test me again, right? So they come to the house, knock on the door and shit. I'm like, what the fuck is these niggas doing in my, at, uh, at my house? Because I don't hang out with them. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm driving. I got cars. I got money. I ain't got time for these niggas hustling in the fucking in the neighborhood. Ain't doing nothing with their lives and shit. But I'm out. You know what I'm saying? Chilling. 
So these niggas come to the door. I think it was Wally that came to my door. And he I opened up the door and he was like, What's up, Fred? Oh, come on side for a minute. I said, Hold on. So I go get the shotgun. I go get the 12 gauge and I'm loading it up. And I'm like, Yeah, what's up, Wally? What you need? And then he was, Oh, nah, nothing, man. I'll holler at you later. And then backed off. Because at that time, I wasn't fucking playing. Now I had solidified myself as a motherfucker that wasn't taking no shit from nobody. And motherfuckers tried to test me. And all that shit got shut down. Because these motherfucking hands done hit a lot of motherfucking people. You hear me? <laughs> and this is before I became a fucking PC tech and shit. You know what I'm saying? Now, I ain't going to get into that. But that goes, that goes to show you that, and I'm just saying this with the gaming show, with us being gamers, and t don't let this shit fool you. You know what I'm saying? Because we're not fucking nerds. Don't disrespect me. You understand what I'm saying? And I'll sum it up with this. Try Jesus. Don't try me because I fight. And I'm going to let it go with that. I couldn't think of no better way to end the show, Fred. I don't even know what to say about that. But uh, like always, you guys can hit us up at the Game Show, gmail.com. That's the Game Show with the lady. Don't forget to head over to the Facebook store page and follow all the prices. Don't forget to hit us up every time. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm a Game Club member. And don't forget about those contests we got going on for Cyberpunk and the Christmas giveaway. Uh, and Participate. Oh, yeah. You'll win. Participate. Yeah, please like, subscribe, and follow all. You know what I'm saying? Participate and all that. I don't forgot all this shit, man. I'm so I'm worked up now. I I, I need to go find somebody to punch in the face, man. I'm, I'm that worked up and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let off some aggression. You know what I'm saying? But like uh, always, we thank you guys. We'll see you next time. Later, y'all.